Hey, Sean, um, three games in the playing outside corner. Uh, some balls have been caught on you. You've had some solid moments as well. Could you just evaluate yourself after three games? I uh, really just keep on getting better. That's all I care about right now. Um, me getting better and then this team is getting better. Um, we got to, as a team, we got to focus on penalties, um, tackling. That's sometimes on the defense side of the ball, offensive side of the ball is penalties. But right now, all I care about is just the team getting better and we just keep on getting better and progressing. Sometimes wide receivers are going to catch balls. I mean, they make plays too, just like you yeah. guys. Did. But I mean, when those happen, what, what happened with Penn State, what happened against Rutgers, when you're talking to Coach Combs about it, when you're going over it in film, I guess, what's the conversation when those types of plays do happen? Um, just things I could work on, um, things I could get better at um, as playing the ball in the air, because I feel like some of the chances I'll, I'll be in a position just playing the ball in the air. But um, like you said, you're going to get caught on. The, the greatest got caught on. So it happens. Um, you got to snap and clear and play the next play. Um, but really, all I do, all I care about is just winning. So. All right, we'll go next to Joey Kaufman from the Columbus Dispatch. Joey. Sean, when you were making the transition from, from slot to outside corner this offseason, what were some of the things you, you did to, to help yourself kind of learn the position? Just what's, what kind of have you found to be the, the biggest challenge? Um, biggest challenge is it's probably the distance it, um, from the ball. Every, everything is definitely farther, especially from that field side. But really really what I've been doing, I've just been going back from last year, watching Jeff and, and Damien and just trying to take some things that they did last year to this year. And um, – that's really I, I still learn from Coach Combs, learn from even seven people that have been playing outside corner more than me. So um, just, just taking it day by day and just keep on learning and progressing. You mentioned the, the length of your being you're further away. Does that does that kind of I guess result in the throws, the balls in the air longer than? Yeah, the balls definitely air longer. In the boundary, the ball come out a little bit quicker and it's a closer throw. But like in a slot, it always was a closer throw because you're closer unless it's a high fade. So, but really, really just. Learning every day. At the end of the day, I, that's all. That's all. That's why I came back is to learn and get better. Thanks, Sean. All right, we'll go next to Bill Landis from the Athletic. Bill. Hey, uh, Sean. Could could you just walk me through your your thought process? I guess when when the ball is in the air and and you are in good position, how you decide you know whether or not you might try to go for an interception or just try to play through the ball and, and make sure you get a, a PBU. So these last games, I've definitely been trying to go for an interception, but I, I, I've been watching my film, just watching myself. Sometimes I just need to go for the PBU, just break the ball up, and that's what I've been noticing. Sometimes I just feel like I've been trying to go for the interceptions too much sometimes, but it, that, that's when that's what happens when you sometimes get greedy. But uh, at the end of the day, really, it's just my body position and how I jump my body, my body when I'm jump. Sometimes I'm jumping back, so um, learning how to jumping into the guy instead of jumping back for the ball. So. Um, just getting better and working at it. Thanks. We'll go next to Doug Lamarice, Cleveland.com. Doug. Sean, I feel like we're kind of all asking you the same questions here, but I think what we're trying to get at is a high level player. How are you evaluating yourself? Like getting in the, I think we're trying to get in the film room with you a little bit. So I just wanted mm -hmm. to ask you about, I think it was a touchdown to the tight end against Rutgers it looked like you were there with him maybe he, he kind of wound up in your area that play I think it's a little bit what you're talking about ball in the air how you play it could you just tell us how you evaluated yourself on that play because we're trying to evaluate it here from the outside mm -hmm. but you're the expert like what what was that play like and what did you maybe learn from that play or what did you do well or not do well on that specific play so with that play I could have just broke the ball up because I was there but if, if you see when I jump I fade it back I, I, when I jump, I went back, like my body took me back instead of jumping kind of into the player where we both fight over the ball. Like we both kind of had the ball and he was a tight end. So tight ends are stronger than DB. So eventually they're going to probably take the ball away from me. But I still jump. But if I jump into him, it, it distracts him. I hit him. We both made body contact. We didn't make no body contact. We both just had like hand contact on the ball. So instead of jumping back, jumping into the play. And so that's one of those things you're, you're a high level player, but you're watching, you're seeing things from yourself of, Hey, this is something that I can work on next time I'm out there. Maybe I'll adjust and do something a little different. Yeah. And at the end of the day, all, all corners have something to work on from the Jalen Ramsey's to the Marshawn's to everybody, everybody still has something to work on. You never perfect that corner. And that's, that's just impossible. So. Thank you, Sean. All right. We'll go next to Austin Ward from Leonard Monroe, Austin. Sean, I know you, you just talked about this, how much you want to learn and that you're trying to get better every week. Have any of these plays in the last couple of weeks, you know, have you been disappointed in yourself? Has your confidence 
flagged at all? Like, what what has been the the mental way that you've handled the the last couple of weeks? More disappointment, no no lack of confidence. Um, you're gonna be disappointed when you want to be great. So at the end of the day, I'm always gonna be disappointed. I, I, even when I have a good game, I'm gonna know some one play that y'all probably don't see that I know that I could have done better at. So all, all that, I just want to get better, and and that's that's all I care about. M me getting better and this team getting better. Thanks, Sean. Alrighty, next up, Dan Hope, 11 Warriors. Dan. When you mentioned that all you care about is wins, but is it hard when you came back for this year to play outside cornerback to not think about how you're being evaluated game in and game out? Um, no, because I evaluate myself. Um, my coaches evaluate me, so they tell me the real. I tell myself the real. I'm not going to be faking myself. So, um, yeah, it, it's not. It's really not hard to just because at the end of the day, you just want to win. So if if I play bad and we win a natty, I'm going to be happy because we want the natty. You see what I'm saying? So that, that that's how that's just how I am. I was my whole life. Like I wasn't uh, my whole life. I never was like the superstar of a team. So. Is there anything about playing this outside cornerback role for free games that's maybe surprised you at all? That maybe has been a little tougher than you thought. Mm, yeah, there've been some surprises. Just the like I said, the vision, the vision part. Mm, not not being in the box, not making so many tackles. Because last year I feel like I was in the box, taking on blocks more. So that that's another thing that's definitely different. But um, just really just just trying to get better. That's all. Thanks, Sean. All right, got time for just a couple more. We'll go to Bill Rabinowitz from the Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hey, Sean. Uh, what are your memories of two years ago against Maryland? Obviously, you know, giving up 51 points was, was the low point of the defense. What do you remember walking off the field that day, and, and what are your impressions of Maryland now? Um, that day, I remember that game. We, we had a bad game on the defensive side of all, missing tackles, not crack, crack replacing. Um, they, they's a very scrappy team, um, nice little stadium. Well, that was back then when COVID was around, but it had a nice little stadium, nice little <laughs> atmosphere. But um, now this Maryland team looks, looks legit, in my opinion. They got a great quarterback with Tua's little brother. Got five outstanding receivers on, on the outside, and they um, they definitely get the, the yard after catch. They get a lot of it. So that's what we got to make sure we tackle if they do catch the ball. So really, we just got to take it, take take practice by practice because they're going to do what they do. We got to do what they do. And then we meet, the talent's going to equate, and we, we got to go what we do in practice. So, I mean, you, you approach every – opponent with a lot of respect I know but are you looking at these guys like hey these guys are really legit we better absolutely be at our on our A game oh yeah definitely definitely I um I talked to coach Collins I talked to seven um prop cook mostly all the DBs and so we definitely have to be on our A game because um they, they definitely could put points on the board and, and 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 things like that so we definitely have to be on our A game even on the outside side of the ball we have to be on the A game so all right thanks Sean all right next up Nathan Baird Cleveland.com Nathan Sean, you mentioned their quarterback play, and I'm just wondering, in your time here at Ohio State, how have you seen the the threat of opposing quarterbacks kind of grow across the, the opponents you're seeing in the Big Ten? Oh yeah, definitely the the, the threat of opponents and, and the threat of quarterbacks in the Big Ten has definitely has grown. Um, even when like, I watched Northwestern a little bit the other day, their their quarterbacks look. I forgot, I don't know what his name is, but their quarterbacks look good. Um, just Peyton I feel like everybody everybody in the Big Ten quarterbacks has definitely definitely upgraded even with ours with adding Justin so uh, with Tua's brother he's definitely he's definitely a dog um, he's not that tall but if he get out of pocket he's dangerous he's very dangerous and he could definitely run and scramble so all right and got time for just two more questions we'll go to Tim May first Tim yeah thank you very much Mike uh how would you define Sean a trick play what is a trick play in your book or is there any such thing as a trick play for a defense uh, which actually has been caught napping or whatever you want to call it. Just how do you define it and what have you guys kind of straightened out this week uh, that kind of maybe went wrong last week against those things? Really, last week we knew they was going to do a lot of trick plays. Um, the first two games, they did eight trick plays in the first two games. So we know with us playing Coach Chiano, he was going to bring a lot of trick plays just to put points on the board. Um, yeah. First half, we was beating them 35-3. So we definitely knew that second half, they was going to come out with everything they had. So they definitely did. The lineman throwback and the the fake punt, the the punt throwback. It was just it was crazy. But my definition of the trip, I really don't have a definition of a trip play. A trip play in my pick in my my book is just a trip play. Um, something that gets your eyes somewhere where they're not supposed to be. So 
Um, they they yeah. definitely done that, and they did they did very well. So, thank you, man. All right, we'll wrap it up today with Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row. Spencer, Sean, when you guys would go against a quarterback like Talia that that can get out of the pocket and, and makes a lot of plays in the scramble drill, how hard is it to practice a scramble drill, and how hard is it to stay disciplined in a scramble drill? Um, it's hard. It's hard, but in practice, when when the linemen tag off. They, they they continue to play where they treat it as a scramble, even though they did get the sack. So at the end of the day, we do practice it. Um, just you just gotta pass it to your man and who you got, cause that well from what I've seen that they got a lot of big plays out of that, and uh, we just have to do that. Um, keep keep him in the pocket. If we keep him in the pocket. I know that's gonna work, and just just take it take it take it day by practice every every day for real.